Hello friends, this is Carrie, and welcome back to I Like Reddit channel. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. Friends, today we have six stories out of the Entitled People subreddit. The first story, I don't normally do trigger warnings, but the first story does contain attempted kidnapping and attempted murder. Just wanted to let you guys know. Anyway, let's begin. Our first story is by Homemade Chipotle Bowl. Entitled ex-boyfriend got arrested again. So yesterday, ex-boyfriend showed up at my house four times, demanding I let him into my house. My ring camera recorded all of it so that I was able to bring enough evidence to the police and the courthouse to file for an emergency restraining order, which should be granted on Monday. Here's to hoping. Now I'm writing this because last night was a whirlwind and I was too stressed and traumatized to even post. I have a clearer head now, so I'm able to post what had happened. My dad and his girlfriend came over last night. I had asked them if they could spend the night so that I could feel secure. They arrived around 9 p.m. and knocked on the door. When I opened it as they were coming Coming inside, X jumped out of the bushes and ran past me, grabbing onto me and trying to pull me outside. I began screaming and I was thrown to the ground. My dad was shouting at him to leave. I stood up and my dad grabbed me and forced me into the house with my stepmom, my son, who were both upset and crying. I was in shock, so I was feeling out of it and could barely talk. X was shouting that I was coming with him and told my dad to get out of his way. I watched as he and my ex began fighting until my ex was pinned to the ground. My stepmom called the police and they arrived, arresting my ex again. Everything was captured on the ring. Watching it was horrifying. X is now in jail, again, and won't be getting out. Officer Angel informed me that his grandmother was also arrested when she was found at the end of the street sitting in her car. She brought him to my house again. I don't understand why this idiot woman thought bringing him back here was a good idea, but she parked at the end of the street to avoid being seen by my camera. The police had already had a description of her car, so when they turned onto my street, they spotted her car and arrested her on the spot. X saw the cops and tried getting away, but he was held at gunpoint by the cops and they handcuffed him. He was screaming that he was only trying to prove his love to me and that I should understand that. I was sitting on the floor with my son who was clutching onto me, scared out of his little mind. I'm all right, I'm not injured, I'm just trauma traumatized and freaked out. My dad is fine. He got a busted lip and some minor bruises, but nothing serious. My ex is small, like 5'6 and 120 pounds. My dad is big, 6'2 and over 300 pounds. My ex was a bleeding mess by the time the cops arrived. I normally hate violence, but my dad was a freaking hero. I've come to the decision to move. This whole situation has caused me stress, lack of sleep, and I've had to miss work three days this week, which will affect if I can pay my rent or not. I'm moving in with my mom and Mimi until I can find my son and me a new place to live. I'm still in shock, but I have a better grip on myself. X tried kidnapping me with no thought about my dad and stepmom that were right there. I wish this wasn't real. I still can't believe this. I'm just glad that it actually might be over. Now that my ex and his loony grandmother are in jail, I've shut down all social media again and won't be turning it back on. I'm looking at homes and apartments and talking to my boss about the possibility of working from home. In a sense, I feel like I'm just hiding myself away, but at the same time, it's preferable to being stalked and harassed by a psycho ex who uses his affliction as some type of excuse to avoid accepting consequences for his behavior. Hopefully, if he spends some time in prison, he'll finally get it, but I doubt it. It's been a whirlwind. I'm still processing. It could have been a lot worse than what it was. I could have been hurt or worse. I'm thankful my dad and the cops for being so swift and understanding. I'm trying to be strong for my child, but he's freaked out and scared and I can't blame him. I'm trying to reassure him that I'm all right and that everything's going to be okay. He's glad that my ex is gone. Officer Angel stopped by today to talk to me and gave my son a ride around the block in his cruiser. Not all cops are evil and I'm so thankful for this one. I don't think I'll be updating again for a while after the next court date. Thanks for all the advice and suggestions. I'll be implementing them once I find a new place. Edit. Thanks to everyone for all the advice and well wishes. It's been a very stressful situation for me and my family. I'm living at my mom's with my son. He's doing fine, albeit a little shaken up from what has happened. He gets nervous and is constantly looking outside to make sure that no one is here. If the doorbell rings or someone knocks, he gets sketched out and runs to me. 
I've decided to get him into therapy, and I will be as well. Waking up this morning, I was hit with a wave of emotions that I've kept bottled up since the attempted kidnapping. I feel like I left a lot of unanswered questions, so now that my head is clearer, I can answer them. When X grabbed me the other night, he whispered in my ear that he was going to end my life as well as his so that we could be reunited in death and no one would be able to keep us apart. I didn't mention this in my previous post, but when X and I first split up 20 years ago, we were being kicked out of our place to live. X was 17 and I was 18. His legal guardian at the time wanted me to leave and was shipping my ex to SOB. X suggested that we end our lives so that we could be together in death. Back then, I didn't take him seriously, so I didn't mention it before. But after the last couple of weeks, combined with what's going on now, I'm convinced 100% that X had every intention of carrying out this threat if he was given the chance. So far, the update is that X and X's grandmother, I call her SOB for stupid old witch, have had a bail hearing on Monday. They are both being charged with attempted kidnapping, stalking, and harassment. X has two extra charges of assault and resisting arrest. When SOB was arrested, they found rope, duct tape, and a knife in the back seat of the car. For legal reasons, I shouldn't jump to any conclusions, but anyone with a brain can conclude what X was planning. SOB was interrogated, and for legal reasons, I can't divulge her answers that she gave, but just know that this woman is a liar or a really convincing idiot. X was also interrogated, and for the same reasons, I can't divulge what he said, just that it got me more terrified than I was before. Officer Angel believes that his interrogation will be enough for the judge to deny him bail. I'm still looking at apartments and houses in another county. So far, my job has been very accommodating and has given me paid leave of absence so that I could deal with all of this. They're also giving me the materials I need to work from home once I'm all set up in a new house. My job is giving me six weeks. I've also spoken to my landlord. My lease is up in two months and he's agreed to let me break the lease with no extra charge because I've been an excellent renter. I only need to pay last month's rent. I'll be putting my things into storage until I find a new place. Both sets of parents are helping me with anything I need. I'm looking into therapists in the area. Find one who handles both adults and children. I found a few and will be calling them on Monday. I usually not the type, but after everything that has happened, I think I need it. I'm also speaking with a victim's advocate who's been amazing in helping me find resources to help my son and I, as well as my family with moving forward from this trauma. This all hit my dad pretty hard and he feels like a failure for letting me get involved with my ex again, even after everything that has happened 20 years ago. I've reassured him that if he hadn't been there, I could be dead right now and so could his grandson. He's our hero and I'm grateful to have him in my life as my dad. Our next story is posted by UCave Edie. I can't check my bag. I'll be late. I'm a flight attendant. I generally work regional jets that have limited overhead bin space. Usually about 30, 22 inch carry-ons can fit. In my first class cabin, I can usually fit 10 of these bags. Every now and then, one or two will have to go just behind first class into the main cabin. Some days more have to go back because the first row in first class doesn't have space for their feet to put their bag. So we board and I quickly run out of overhead bin space. I notify the gate agent who begins tagging bags for cargo hold regardless of where people are sitting. As boarding ends, here comes Miss Entitled with her three items. Please note that FAA regulations say two in which one of them has to be tagged. Our conversation begins. Me. Hello ma'am, just leave your tagged bag at the door. The agent will be up shortly. Miss Entitled. I'm in first class. My bag needs to come on. Me. We are out of bin space. You are above the allowable items on board the aircraft. The FAA only allows for two items. Miss Entitled. I'll put my purse inside the other bag, but you need to make space. I paid for my ticket. I'm in first class. Me. There is no space. Period. As a matter of fact, you can come aboard and open every bin and clearly see that there is no space. Miss Entitled. You're going to make me late for my meeting then? I cannot check this bag. At this point, the agent comes down to verify that I'm ready to close. The ramper also comes to collect her bag. 
me. It's either you leave it with him or you stay behind. Gate agent. Ma'am, I need your back. Miss Entitled. I don't believe you all are going to make me a first class passenger and a frequent flyer check my bag. At this point, my captain comes out of the flight deck as he hears the commotion. He intervenes and tells Miss Entitled that she has two options and about 10 seconds to choose. Check her bag and make her meeting in New York, or miss it, take the next flight so that she can bring her bag aboard. Regardless of which one she chooses, the boarding door is closing. She begrudgingly leaves her bag and gets on. To put icing on the cake, her second bag was too large to fit under the seat in front of her, so my coworker barely made a spot for the bag in the back of the aircraft. She had to wait until most of the people on the plane were off to go back and get it. Our next story is posted by NotMe690P. Rich hippie girl doesn't understand why people don't want her leavings. So I work in a touchy-feely business. We get a lot of idealistic young college graduates, mostly from wealthy families as starting pay is pretty low. So I see some entitled young people. I also see others that surprise me with their work ethic. Anyway, this particular woman, let's call her Bus Hippie, showed up in a converted bus that had obviously had some serious money sunk into the conversion, but also had lots of body damage, like poor driving kind. She tended to park in the closest parking spots, even though her vehicle was not going to move for a week. Anyway, main story. She had moved from full-time to part-time. One of the duties of part-time staff is helping at staff exchange, driving, etc. On these days, the company would buy pizza for everyone. We noticed that Bus Hippie would pick the toppings off the pizza and leave the pieces in the box. This went on for several of these days. Finally, another part-time employee called her on it in a quieter setting. She was shocked that people didn't want the pieces that she had partially strip mined, doesn't take cheese or sauce. I hold a technical role while higher in the organization. I'm not in her direct line of supervision, so I didn't feel it was my place to say anything. She left shortly after this, thank goodness. I'm often shocked by the thoughtlessness of entitled people who profess to be all about improving the world. If you're enjoying the content so far, please put a heart emoji in the comment section down below. Our next story is posted by Silent Joe 27 She demanded that he choose between his job or his family. She didn't get the response she expected. I posted about the owner's wife at a job where I used to work in an r slash ask reddit post and remembered this story. Despite the fact that it was her husband's theater with his name, she was often the one calling the shots and often had a Karen attitude despite not looking the part and terrible at prioritizing what was important. For some reason, the general manager would often have a skeleton crew scheduled for Saturday afternoons, which would usually bite us in the butt. This particular Saturday, one of our co-workers pulled a no-call, no-show, leaving only three of us on staff. An employee in the box office, me as the usher, an employee behind the concession stand, and the manager. This was before digital projectors were commonplace, so the manager was stuck in the projection booth, making sure that the movies got started on time. We ended up getting slammed. I looked and found that the concession stand line was almost out the door. I immediately left my post and jumped behind concessions to help my coworker knock out the line. In the middle of it, the owner and his wife came in. I cringed because I knew there was going to be hell to pay. Me is me, CW is coworker, OW is owner's wife. Owner's wife. What the hell is going on here? Why don't we have an usher? Me. We're understaffed and we got busy, and there was a line at concessions almost out the door. Owner's wife. Well, where's the manager? He should be helping out. Coworker. He's stuck in the projection booth. Owner's wife. Well, what about the general manager? Why isn't he here? She then proceeded to pull out her phone and call him. Coworker and I just looked at each other in horror because he was scheduled off because he had custody of his son for the weekend. Meanwhile, she was practically shouting at him over the phone. Owner's wife. I don't care. You need to choose between your family or your job. This is no excuse. Well, the general manager made his choice. He came into the theater with his son in tow, but only to turn in his keys and leave. The owner practically chased him out the door into the parking lot, pretty amazing since he was a man in his 70s, and talked him out of quitting. He later had a talk with his wife. As the years went on, she gained more control as he got older and couldn't keep up. She was in her late 30s, early 40s, and she ran the theater into the ground before he finally sold it. Sadly, last I heard, she put him in a home and he doesn't really hear from her anymore. Our next story is posted by These Mods Suck. Entitled Neighbor thinks he owns a piece of my land. This happened some years ago. 
We had just bought a fixer-upper house with a rather large garden somewhere in the countryside of Germany. On the first day of having access to the property, the neighbor, N, comes out to tell me that he just planted 60 cedar trees as a separation of our two properties. Neighbor also tells me that his property extends one meter, about three feet, onto my side of the trees. He had done that on purpose to make sure that he could take care of them and they would have room to grow. I thought nothing of it at the time. After about a year of working on the house, there was a lot to be done and also I have a day job. We're ready to move in. It's now time to turn my attention to the garden. Since we have little kids and a dog, we want a fence to keep them safe from the traffic on the main road. German law is very strict when it comes to fences and hedges. There are all kinds of complicated restrictions on the type of fence slash hedge, the maximum height, etc. The rules change depending on who you the rules change depending on who you share the border of the garden with, the street, a neighbor, or agricultural land, etc. I'm not German, but I know they take the rules very seriously, so I decide to play it by the book. Luckily, my father-in-law is a retired surveyor who had been measuring for municipalities where we live for 40 plus years. Father-in-law tells me that we need to go and find the border stones, massive granite poles buried at every corner of the property. From there, we can connect them to get the border. Father-in-law also pulled all official records and drawings using his contacts at the municipality. The property is well over 100 years old, so lots of interesting stuff on people who owned it before. As father-in-law and I are measuring with professional surveyor equipment, I'm placing those red and white rods into the ground where the property line is. Father-in-law checked and double-checked with all the drawings, but of course, it turns out that the cedar trees are about one meter on my property, not the other way around. As neighbor sees me planting the rods, he comes running out of his house yelling, what the hell do I think I'm doing sticking these rod things into the ground on his property? Father-in-law tells neighbor, in a very German way, where the property line is and shows him the border stones, explains the equipment and measurements, but neighbor is having none of it. He knows where the property line is, where it's always been, and we were wrong. Father-in-law tells him that he's a pro that knows how to survey land and he's never been wrong, and that he's certainly not wrong now. Neighbor, feeling concerned, pivots and says that we had moved the border stones. Moving these stones is near impossible. They're heavy, they go deep into the ground, and it's a serious offense in Germany. Father-in-law tells the neighbor to call the police, but he better be ready to back up his claim with evidence or he's going to be in trouble. Neighbor runs off screaming. About a month later, I see a team of three people in safety vests and helmets surveying my property. It turns out that neighbor paid four to five thousand euros, estimate from father-in-law, to get back at me. A week later, neighbor tells me in a soft Davida voice that father-in-law was indeed right about where the property line is, but that in all the years that he had lived there he thought it was somewhere else. I tell the neighbor that I understand and no problem but I need a fence real soon and that the cedar trees are in the way. He tells me those are his trees and that I can't touch them. What are now my trees I propose that we team up, dig them up, and move them to his property. I want peace with my neighbors. He tells me he doesn't want to do it because some of the trees might die when moved. I tell him that I would be willing to split the cost of replacing any trees that died during the move. He tells me no, and that he would be talking to a lawyer soon. WTF? I decide that I'm officially done trying to appease this neighbor. Three days later, I get a letter from neighbor's lawyer telling me that the property line has been somewhere else for such a long time that it is now re-established. And of course, this doesn't apply to me because I've only recently bought the property. I get an attorney to write a letter telling N to go pound sand. I immediately pull out the cedar trees, shred them for compost. I put up a two meter high wooden fence, planted hedges at the proper distance, it has been several years and the hedges are now three meters high and the neighbors still won't talk to me. I've told this story around the neighborhood and nobody was surprised. They all told me that the neighbor was an entitled individual and he had been trying to tell everyone how much of a horrible person I was for shredding his trees. Too long didn't read. Neighbor tries to steal a piece of my property by planting his trees on it, gets proven wrong, still goes ahead assuming the trees are staying. I try to compromise, but he's not having it. I read his trees because they're mine. Edit for spelling and grammar. Our final story is by Not a Robot, Definitely a Cyborg. 
Susan the Snack Stealer. I used to work with a super entitled woman once upon a time. Her name was Susan. Susan liked to get into the office earlier than everyone else, but I didn't find out why until I'd worked there for a few months. She was the sort who liked to help herself to snacks people had in the communal fridge. She also liked to take individual sodas from a case my cubicle neighbor kept under her desk and had a real thing for stealing either my chocolate or my good granola bars, depending on what I had stashed, right out of my desk drawer. She got her comeuppance one year at the office Christmas potluck. We had a lady who did Greek cooking and was magnificent at it. This particular year, she had brought an enormous tray of mini spanakopita, the spinach and feta cheese and phyllo dough. Each one was roughly the size of an Oreo cookie. Literally hundreds of these little beauties stacked too high in a tray, just waiting to be devoured. And then along comes Susan, and then along comes Susan with a Tupperware of holding. I kid you not, she scooped up a quarter of the contents of the tray into her Tupperware, looked around furtively to make sure that no one would try to stop her. She brushed the phyllo crumbs from her fingers and popped the seal on her Y-sized Tupperware and turned smugly away from the buffet table, and every single person in the office was glaring at her, fit to set her permanently ablaze. Our office manager was particularly salty, because she, dear readers, was the Greek chef who had provided these delicious morsels. She spoke, and it was with the voice of a vengeful goddess. Susan, what the hell do you think you're doing? Crickets. And then, foot tapping began. Tap. Tap. Tap and then a hand on a hip. And finally, the finger of doom did aim at Susan, thief of treats, hoarder of spanakopita. Susan did meekly open her Tupperware Y bowl and return to the tray roughly 90% of the spanakopita. Thus, the office manager was appeased and thus was Susan forever sneak shamed. That's all the stories I have for today. Links to the original Reddit post will be in the description box below. Please stop on by Reddit to show the OP some love and an upvote. If you enjoy my videos, please comment, like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification to let you know when I upload new videos. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.